In this video, we're going to be looking at topic 8GD, which is metals and acids, as part of the Year 8 Exploring Science curriculum and Key Stage 3. So our learning objective today is to answer the question, what happens when metals react with acids? And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the reactions of metals with acid, use this to place metals in order of reactivity, and be able to write word and symbol equations for these reactions. So this is section four of topic 8G, metals and their uses. So we've covered metal properties, corrosion, which is the reaction of metals and oxygen. We've covered the reaction of metals and water. And now we're going to look at how they react with acids and what salts can be formed. So to recap the previous lesson, we learned that metals on the far left of the periodic table, like the alkali metals, react quickly with cold water. So ones like lithium, sodium and potassium. When the metals react with water, they're going to form hydrogen gas and the metal hydroxide. And we can test the hydrogen gas because it burns with a squeaky pop. We also learned that some metals do not react with cold water like gold or they react very slowly like magnesium. And we can use these differences in reactivity when they react with oxygen and water to place metals in a reactivity series. And we can do something very similar now with acids. So metals very regularly come into contact with acids. Acids are actually all around us in our everyday life. Even ordinary rainwater can be acidic. And this sometimes is due to pollution where it becomes very acidic and we can call this acid rain. But rainwater is naturally slightly acidic as well. And when this rainwater gets onto metal structures like bridges and cars, it can react with the metal. And sometimes it can react to form a salt or it can change the composition or even the colour of the compound. So a perfect example would be the Statue of Liberty. So hopefully you know what this is. This is in New York in the USA. And nowadays, the Statue of Liberty is green. But actually, when it was first given to the United States by France, it was a shiny brown colour because it's actually made of copper. And over the years, oxidation or reacting with oxygen and the reaction of acids have caused the colour to change to green. So this is an imagination of what the Statue of Liberty would have looked like back in 1886. Of course, they didn't have colour photographs back then, but we can know that this is what it would look like. And over time, due to the reaction with oxygen and with acids and even some of the moisture and air, there has been a build up of copper oxide and also some copper salts on the surface. And this copper oxide and the copper salt has caused this green colour. So this is the reaction of the metal. Now we know that copper is quite low on the reactivity series, which is why this reaction has taken a long time for it to change the colour. Now metals can react faster with acids than they do with water, but we can still take advantage of this difference in the level of reactivity in order to make the reactivity series. So the same as we did with water and oxygen, we can now do with acid. So we look at the metal reactions with acids, water and oxygen. And what we actually see is that the order of reactivity is the same regardless of which one it is that you're reacting it with, um, even though they make different products. So we see the same order each time. If we're looking at the reaction of a metal and acid, then we are forming a salt, which we'll talk about a little bit more in just a minute, and we're still making our hydrogen gas as well. So the main difference here being that we're not making a metal hydroxide this time, we're making a salt. So what we can see here is that we have three metals reacting with water and with hydrochloric acid. So we have calcium, magnesium and copper. Now what we can see each time in the reactions is we can see these bubbles. And the bubbles are bubbles of gas being formed. This is the hydrogen being made. And we can see how much hydrogen is being made in a short space of time. And the more hydrogen we make, the more reactive. So the more bubbles, 
the more reactive the metal. So if we compare calcium to magnesium to copper, we can see the calcium gives off lots of bubbles with water, as well as lots of bubbles with hydrochloric acid. Magnesium doesn't give off very many bubbles with water, but it does with the hydrochloric acid. However, it's less than the calcium. And the copper does not react with either of them. So we see no bubbles being formed. This video link here is a good video to show these reactions happening in real life. And that will be posted in the description if you want to check that out. Now, when a metal reacts with an acid, what we physically see is we see something called effervescence. And this is another word for the bubbles of gas. It's a proper scientific word. And what we also see is we see the metal looking like it's disappearing. And what we actually mean is that we're getting a gas, which is the bubbles, and we're forming a solution. So the metal is dissolving. Okay, it appears to be disappearing, but what actually happens is it dissolves into the water, or sorry, into the acid, and it forms something called a salt solution. And most of these solutions are colourless, but sometimes they can have a colour. You don't need to know which or which just now. Now, the gas given off in the reaction is hydrogen, and we've said that this solution is a salt solution. Now, sometimes we don't want the solution, we want the solid and we can get the solid salt by using evaporation. And this simply means we remove the water and that allows us to keep the solid salt. So how do we do this? Well, we do it in three steps. The first step is to add the acid to the metal and then we make the salt and hydrogen. So you can see in the first picture that we've got these bubbles and we can see a gas being given off. This is the formation of the hydrogen and we're going to be making our metal solution here. Then we are going to have some metal being left over so we filter in order to remove the excess metal meaning the extra and then we evaporate the water and this gives us the solid salt. So we add the metal to the acid, we filter the solution and then we evaporate and that gives us our solid salt and you will actually cover this again in IGCSE and you will get a chance to carry out this experiment as well. Now the salt that we form depends on not only the metal but it also depends on the acid that we use. If we use sulfuric acid we make sulfate salts. If we use nitric acid we make nitrate salts and if we use hydrochloric acid, we make chloride salts. So for example, if I react iron with hydrochloric acid, I'm going to make iron chloride salt. So let's look at a couple of examples of how we can write this out as an equation. So my metal is potassium and my acid is hydrochloric acid. So my salt, I always put the name of the metal first. So I make potassium. And then hydrochloric acid make chloride salts. So this is potassium chloride. And that has the symbols KCl. Now we can write out a word equation. So we can have potassium plus hydrochloric acid is going to make potassium chloride. Remember, we always use an arrow, we never use an equal sign, plus hydrogen. And we can also write a chemical equation where this is K plus HCl, and we make KCl plus hydrogen gas, which is H2. Now, if we have barium reacting with sulfuric acid, again, I write the name of the metal first. So I make barium and then sulfuric acid makes sulfate salts. So I make barium sulfate. And that has the symbol BASO4. Now, don't worry, you're not expected to know the symbols yet or how to get them. For key stage three, you would be told the symbols. So let's write out our word equation again. So we have barium plus 
sulfuric acid is going to react to give barium sulfate plus hydrogen. And we can also write our chemical equation. So we have Ba plus H2SO4 gives me BaSO4 plus H2. And then let's look at a last example. So we have sodium and nitric acid. That's going to make sodium nitrate. And that has the symbols Na, N, O3. So again, let's write out our word equation. We have sodium plus nitric acid is going to give sodium nitrate plus hydrogen. And our chemical equation is Na plus H NO3 gives Na NO3 plus H2. So we've got our word equations and our symbol equations that we've been practicing in this topic so far. Now what we can do to summarize everything is we can take the reactions of metals with oxygen, acid and water that all fall under these general reactions and we can then show this on the reactivity series and as we've already practiced we can use this reactivity series to predict the positions of a metal in the series or we can predict how a metal may react based on where it is. So here we have the reactivity series. Now this has got a couple of extra metals in it compared to what you need to know and it also has carbon and hydrogen which we know are non-metals but don't worry about them just now. What we want to focus on is the fact that we have lots of metals reacting with oxygen, only some metals reacting with acids and only some metals reacting with water. And remember our most reactive is at the top and our unreactive is at the bottom. So our learning objective was to look at what happens when metals react with acids. So hopefully now you can describe the reactions of metals with acids. You can put the metals in order of reactivity and you're getting better at practicing and writing out our word and symbol equations for these reactions. If there's anything you're not sure about, please feel free to ask your teacher or feel free to leave a comment below and we hope to see you back on the channel soon.